Um, I'm going to introduce some elected officials we have here, and then at some point we may also have some candidate speeches. So we have, um, first of all, are there any statewide candidates um, or fifth congressional or senior region candidates? Okay, I didn't see anyone, so if that changes, let me know. We have, um, from Teller County, we have County Commissioner Buck, Buck Hammond, County Treasurer Bob Campbell, and I think those are our two elected officials. From El Paso County, we have County Commissioners Sally Clark, Dennis Heisey, and Amy Layton. Until we adopt the credentials report. 
but we can save some time by reviewing them now. The rules were drafted by Duncan Bremer's committee and include a statement regarding the vacancy committee. The fourth judicial bylaws designate the vacancy committee as the four JD uh, committee that I just uh, uh, introduced you. In other words, the fourth judicial district Republican Central Committee is also the vacancy committee. Rather than listing the names of each of the vacancy committee members, they will be stated by position. In other words, the Teller County RCC chair will be designated instead of Pete Labar, who is the chair. This saves a lot of time if Pete Labar resigns. So we don't have to recontact the uh, state and tell them that our vacancy committee has changed. The vacancy committee, by the way, this particular vacancy committee will replace the candidate if he gets run over by a truck or resigns or flies to Venezuela or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, hopefully the vacancy committee will not be needed, but we do have to designate it and ratify it to, to a state. When we vote for the rules, we will also be voting to ratify the vacancy committee because they're written into the rules. Okay? Are there any questions? Yes, sir. Let me just clarify one thing. The central committee of the 4th Judicial District is it includes also the bonus members uh, that are currently elected, have been elected at the previous central committee meeting, uh, who reside within the district. So there are uh, four bonus members from El Paso County who are men and four bonus members from El Paso County who are women. Uh, they are also members of the central committee. So they would also be members of the Assembly Vacancy Committee to replace the uh, candidates designated to the uh, primary ballot or in the event that the candidate who wins the primary ballot has to be replaced. They would also be the same people uh, replacing them as, as the Assembly Vacancy Committee. They do not replace the sitting district attorney if, if that office becomes vacant. That's a different vacancy committee, which happens to be the same people. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Duncan. If anyone would like to submit a motion regarding the rules or any other issue, please write the motion, sign it, and submit it to Holly. While we're waiting for the credentials committee report, we have time for other candidates to speak. We will start with candidates from the 5th Congressional District. Or do we have any candidates present present who are running for 5th CD? Okay, how about uh, statewide candidates? I think the only ones that might be here might be CU Regents. Any candidates for CU Regents? Okay, now we get to the fun part. County Commissioners. Any County Commissioner candidates from El Paso County here? I'm Amy Lathan. I am your District 2 County Commissioner and I am running for my second term in office. And I want to say to all of you, thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Um, thank you all so much for taking the time to be at the County Assembly uh, a little over a week ago. Um, what a pleasure it is to work with each and every one of you uh, and to be a part of this whole thing. Now I want to just say very quickly that you know they say that flexibility is a sign of good mental health. We also know that Mr. Obama uh, just stated that he was seeking a little more flexibility um, in his second term. And so I think that all of us need to play a vital role in flexing him into the private sector in November. Other county commissioner candidates. Thank you. I almost feel like I'm in a regional council of governments meeting with all these Teller County people here. 
Um, I, we're here today really to celebrate uh, Dan May and re-electing him to another term as our district attorney. But what I wanted to just talk about is when, when serving the public, it's really about three different things. It's about building relationships, it's about having the knowledge, and it's about having the experience and being able to talk to specifics. Republicans don't want just hope and change and generalities. They want specifics on what you're going to do. But the other day, our DA, Dan May, came to me and he said, Sally, what sets you apart from the others is that you get things done. When you look back at a track record, I've supported public safety. I've supported road projects. I've supported the things that matter to us as conservatives, upholding the principles of Tabor, making sure we support the Second Amendment, the sanctity of life, and those kinds of things, those principles that we really refer back to. In addition, I think it's important to remember that um, those specifics you can look back to and see what I've done. And I would invite you to check out my website at electclark.com. It becomes a reputation of a circular firing squad sometimes during election season. And lots of things are said about you, especially when you're an elected official. So please feel free to call me. Thank you. I'm Sally Clark, El Paso County Commissioner, District 3, and I would look forward and be honored to continue to serve you on the Board of County Commissioners. Thanks. Thank you. I'm Dennis Heisey, uh, your El Paso County Commissioner from District 4, the southern end of the county. Um, sitting back there, the rest of my, uh, my southern folks. I want you to know that, uh, that I think based on the new names, the new faces, and the new blood that I, I saw come out of caucus for, uh, for delegate and alternate, I think the El Paso County Party, uh, the Republican Party in El Paso County is alive and well and doing good things. So give yourselves a hand. Thank you all for being here, and I, uh, I appreciate you, you coming down here to, uh, to help me uh, elect Dan May to uh, another term, a second term. He has been a, a great elected official to work with. He does a great job over in his building, but he also does a great job working with us, and that's important at the county. We all have to work together. We don't get anything done. Dennis Heisey, District 4. Are there any more uh, El Paso County Commissioner candidates? How about Teller County? Good evening, everyone. My name is Norm Steen. I'm a delegate. Oh, excuse me. I am a delegate. I'm also a candidate uh, for Teller County Commissioner District 3. For those who are outside of Teller County, that's Woodland Park. Uh, to this office, I'm bringing 18 years of business experience, 30 years of military experience, and I'm looking forward to serving as the next county commissioner. Um, and I uh, look forward to meeting many of you as I head into the, well, the primary. You know, I started out with two opponents, and both of them now have since dropped out. I had a real strong showing at the assembly, uh, being the opponent three to one, uh, and then most recently he had an opponent who was petitioning, petitioning on to the ballot and was unsuccessful. So I find myself now uh, being the sole candidate for the Republican seat in District 3. They look forward to serving Keller County and working very closely with Dan May. civic-minded people here, especially when they're all Republicans. <laughs> I told Dan I wasn't quite decided when I got here tonight, but I'm kind of leaning towards him. <laughs> and all the rest of you guys are going too. Uh, as far as myself, I'm a small business owner. I have been for about 25 years, and I want to offer Teller County all that management experience. And uh, I'm used to tough budgets and uh, having to make, make things work. Uh, Teller County actually is always in great shape. The county has a balanced budget, we'll be out of debt by the end of this year, and my main goal is to keep it that way. Thanks very much. Are there any other county commissioner candidates? Uh, let me get, take a check here of our credentialing committee and see how they're doing.
Okay, one more commercial. We have this wonderful facility um, that has been such a great asset to our community. I remember four years ago when my husband was running for clerk and recorder, how the owners of this facility hosted <laughs> debates. They've hosted debates for city council. Um, they're gracious enough to host us tonight. So again, there's water, there's drinks, and there's great desserts. We would appreciate it if you could um, help out and um, buy some food. I will go find your credentials. Let's take a short break in place here and uh, we'll see if we can get the credentials up. If we could uh, reconvene, please. reports 21 delegates and two alternates. The total number of delegates is 217. The total number of alternates is 40. Mr. Chairman, I move acceptance of the credentials report. As the adoption of the credentials report has been moved by the chair of the credentials committee, the motion does not require a second. The question before the body is the adoption of the credentials report. Are you ready for the question? Yes. All in favor of adopting the credential report say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The credentials committee report is adopted. The next item of, of business is the adoption of the rules and agenda to govern the conduct, the conduct of this assembly. Copies of the rules were available in the lobby. The chair recognizes Duncan Bremer, the chairman of the rules committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I move that we dispense with the reading of the rules in the agenda and move the adoption of the rules and agenda and ratification of the assembly vacancy as published, the assembly vacancy committee as published. The question before the committee is the adoption of the rules and agenda and the waiver of their reading. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the rules, vacancy committee, and agenda are adopted. The next order of business is a designation of Republican candidates for the office of 4th Judicial District, District Attorney, to the June 26, 2012 primary election ballot in accordance with section 1-4-601 of the Colorado Revised Statutes and Relevant Party Rules. The Chair declares the floor to be open for the nomination of Republican candidates to be designated by this Assembly to the June 26, 2012 primary election ballot. The Chair recognizes Gene Smith for the purpose of a nomination. Each candidate has a total of 15 minutes for nominations and acceptance. Jean. Thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Jeannie Smith. I had the privilege of serving you all for two terms as district attorney. I'm very pleased to be back here with you this evening. 
When a prosecutor stands up in front of a jury, the first thing they say is, ladies and gentlemen, I represent the people of the state of Colorado, and in particular, the people of the 4th Judicial District. When you spend 22 years in an office saying those words, as I did here in this district attorney's office, you care very much that when you leave the office, it is in the hands of someone who has and deserves the public's trust. You care very much that that person leads the office in such a way that the people working there are proud to say those words when they stand up in front of a jury. It was Abraham Lincoln who said, nearly all men can stand adversity, but if you want to test a man's character, give him power. And isn't that the truth? Don't clap for me. I'll tell Abe someday. <laughs> but it is through the exercise of power that you see a person's intellect. You see their courage. And when they refrain from abusing power, you see their humanity. <coughs> Those are all qualities that are critical to a district attorney. Those are qualities that our candidate for district attorney has. And it is my very great pleasure to place in nomination the name of Dan May for district attorney for the 4th Judicial District. Thank you. firsthand working with Mr. May in his leadership style, his commitment to the community, and his frugalness working with county budgets. As conservatives, we are always interested in how we conservatively spend our money because it's the taxpayer's money. And I've seen firsthand, as I mentioned, on how Dan is able to do that within a tight budget in the district attorney. I am very proud and honored to second the nomination of Mr. Dan May as our next continuing as our district attorney for the Fort Judicial District. Um, good evening. My name is Dan Zuck, and I'm the current assistant district attorney. And I've known Dan for oh, it's hard to believe, but maybe 25 years now, maybe a few more, <laughs> roughly 25 years. And uh, during that time, uh, I've seen him do everything he can do in the district attorney's office. Uh, he's been in the office uh, uh, when he started out. He's been a uh, deputy district attorney in county court. He's gone on to the uh, head of the drug unit. He's been involved in the gang unit, the head of the gang unit. He's gone on to be the chief trial deputy. He's been uh, the assistant district attorney. And now, of course, he's the district attorney. <coughs> Uh, he has tried probably more cases than most uh, DAs do. He is one of these people that lead by example. He's always believed in that, and he has done that. Um, Dan is, uh, and I kid you not, he is the hardest working district attorney in this state. Uh, I, and I know, I've seen them, there are other hard working DAs, but he's the hardest working. And he's experienced and he is knowledgeable. He is the type of DA where uh, other DAs call him uh, if they have a question and they listen. And so it is my pleasure to nominate, uh, second the nomination of our current district attorney, the Honorable Dan. standing behind podiums. Well, thank you very much. Those are very, very kind words. I'll tell you, I I'm going to tell you some things some of you may have heard before. It truly has been an honor to serve this community over the last three plus years. And it is a humbling experience. You realize for a short period of time, you get to give, be given a position of trust for this community, and you take that responsibility uh, 
very high. But I gotta tell you, it, it, it has been fabulous working with the people down at our district attorney's office. We have a fabulous group down there that I'm gonna point out some of them tonight as I go through some of the things that we have accomplished. I'm gonna let you know some of the challenges our DA's offices face and how we've stepped up to those challenges over the last few years. And really the credit goes to the fabulous people who work down at our office. They're great professionals, they're hardworking, they're dedicated, they want to step out there and help the victims, they want to help prevent crime across this community and in the Pikes Peak region. When I came into office a few years ago, a lot of you, actually I'll start with, you may not know how big our office is, how sophisticated our operation is. If I throw out names of cities like New Orleans, Miami, Minneapolis, St. Louis, and I ask you who's bigger, that or Colorado Springs? Colorado Springs is bigger in population than every one of those cities. There are 25 states that don't have a city the size of Colorado Springs. When I say El Paso County and Teller County in the Pikes Peak region, El Paso County now has the largest population of any county in the state of Colorado. The 4th Judicial District is both sides of Pikes Peak. We have more felony cases than any DA's office in the state of Colorado, and there are 22 of them. We usually are battling with Arapahoe County over who has the most traffic and misdemeanor. I have 78 attorneys. A lot of people don't realize how many we have. Handling 25 to 35,000 cases per year. It's a heck of a job. When I came into office, you know we're in a fiscally conservative community. My budget is usually about $10.5 million over the last three years. When I came into office, they had to cut, as you know, 2008, 2009 is when we had to cut budgets. And our county commissioners stepped up on that. A lot of these state and city budgets are still little <coughs> away at things. They stepped up. I had to cut 10% of my budget, 14 personnel out of my office. And yet we still expected our people to perform at the same levels. When I tell you 10.5, you should know. When I compare that to Denver, it's an $18 million budget. Arapahoe County, $19.5 million budget. Jefferson County, $17 million budget. Adams, which really doesn't even compare, $14 million budget with maybe half as much work as what we have in our office. When I came into office, we had too many veterans coming back. Our community knows more than any what it is, what the price of freedom is. The sacrifices our families are making as we are fighting a war over Iraq and Afghanistan. We had far too many of our veterans coming back doing crimes we had never seen before. I had a young office. I had attorneys handling rape, robbery, murder trials that were plea bargaining them and maybe having a, year, a trial or two a year in my felony courts. When I look back in their background, I found several had done two misdemeanor trials before they had been moved up into our district courts to handle felonies, and they were scared to go to trial. Uh, so as we faced those issues, we had to trim budget. We looked at, at first getting the right people on board, getting some of the right managers, and I'll introduce some of those uh, as we go through this. We looked at investing in our people first, we have done training at levels you wouldn't believe. We never had a training program for our legal administration staff before. We started that my first year and had books on how to do that. We never had a manual or training on our paralegals. We had a manual, but it was out of date on even training our attorneys, so we invested in our people first. And we, now, we hired some people uh, to come in. Dan Zook, who you just saw. Dan Zook has been named the the DAs across the state each year vote the Prosecutor of the Year. He's been voted in the past as the Prosecutor of the Year of the state of Colorado. I brought him on board as the number two. He's probably tried more death penalty cases than any deputy DA or any attorney in this state. Uh, we brought in Kim Kitchen. Kim, where are you? Stand up, let the people see you. This is one tough lady. I put her in charge of all of our felony and homicide trials uh, for the 4th Judicial District, and she's one tough lady who's done a great job in that role. Uh, Michelle Nelson, where are you? Stand up. She's in charge of our staff. When I talk about the training, she's, we have 220 staff members, and she's in charge of our staff. Michelle, the girl, stand up. If you want to get a hold of me, she's my legal assistant. And she also do things on the grand jury. Guess who organizes the grand jury over in our office? Guess who's in charge of facilities? She's in charge of that. Robin Cafaso, you heard about, is our chairman here. We're a hard-working group. I got two homicide trials going on right now. I've got the Josh Carrier trial going on right now. Ray Marshall, uh, that some of you heard right now. We have eight other felony trials going on right now. Robin couldn't be here because we got her hard-working because she's in trial on the Ray Marshall case. 
Guess who's been named Prosecutor of the Year in the state of Colorado? Robert Cavazzi. Prosecutor of the Year couldn't be here tonight. She's out of town. Shannon Gerhardt, who tried three homicide cases last year. They were fabulous. Jeff Harward in our office was named the DEA Prosecutor of the Year for the country uh, because of what he did on Operation Deliverance. If you saw that, we have a fabulous group down there. Gwen Stein, did Gwen get to make it tonight? Gwen, stand up. He's <laughs> like Gwen Stein away from focus in the family. She's in charge of my volunteer operations. How do you get by on our budget? We have about approximately 125 volunteers at any given time at every level you can think of. Uh, whether it's investigations, helping our attorneys, helping our staff, doing prevention programs in schools, doing prevention programs out with different clubs and charities. She's been fabulous in putting that together and was named the, the most prestigious award you can get in the volunteer world is the Kaleidoscope Award. Guess who the current recipient is? Part of my vision, to, part of it is to give my vision to my deputies so they know where to put their emphasis when you've got 25 to 35,000 cases. When I came into office, I promised you that we would go after violent criminals. I promised you that we would go after the people who are preying on our children, either by molestation or child abuse. I promised you that we would go after habitual criminals. Those are the career criminals that do felony after felony after felony. When I looked at the stats in our office, they started keeping a habitual criminal stat on how many times they took a habitual criminal trial two years before I came into office. In those two years, they had taken one to trial. In the last three years, we've taken 33 habitual criminals to trial. When I look at our violent crimes in the history of our office, we have never taken 100 violent felony trials to trial. We've done that both of the last two years, 2010 and 2011. In 2010, I got a call from the state judicial up in Denver saying, what are you guys doing down there? I said, what do you mean? They said, you set a record in the state of Colorado on our budget with our personnel for the most felony trials of any DA's office in the state of Colorado. This year, I got a call from our judicial administrator at El Paso County because he said, we have set a record in 2011 for the most trials ever, both county and district court combined. Our people are taking a tough line on the right cases. When I look at our kids' cases, we had 14 felony trials the year before I took office. My first year, we had 22. The next year, we had 43. This past year, one out of every five of our trials involved a child as a victim in our felony courts. That one, I had judges come up and stop me in the hall and say, Dan, I understand why you're taking a tough line there. But we're having a lot of trials. Some of these are tough trials. You're taking up a lot of our court trial, and I stopped them. There's two judges at the time, and I said, I agree with your first line. You understand why we're taking a tough line on our kids' cases, and that's what we're doing. We set a goal to have a murder trial a month. Two years ago, we had 13. Did Baker's dozen. Last year, we had 11. We've got two in trial right now. We had Dentra Ferries that we had a very good result on a month ago. Our one for January, they know we take these things seriously now, pled guilty to first-degree murder, and accepted a life sentence on his case. So that one didn't go to trial, but it was much cheaper, actually, for, for, for you as constituents. As we faced the veterans issue, we opened the first and only veterans court in the state of Colorado about 10 months into my administration. It's a chance to be able to not just treat our veterans coming back as criminals and to charge them and convict them, but to treat them with the respect and dignity they deserve. It's a tough program. If they get into my veterans court, it is tougher than going into regular probation but it deals with the issues they're coming back with, the PTSD, the TBI, the close head injuries from explosions going on. Um, and, and we had our first graduate in November of this past year, and we were excited to see that. Uh, we've now open, expanded our veterans court over to our misdemeanors. Before, we could only do it in our felonies. We started that uh, just a couple months ago uh, this past summer. The are actually back, back in July of this past year to expand that court. It's not a court we hope to be able to shut down someday, but obviously that's not occurring as we know with the national news and what's going on in Afghanistan right now. The, um, we've expanded, and actually I have wonderful people in all departments. We talked about our, uh, I have more presidential nominees for volunteers than any organization in the Pikes Peak region, is that fair point? So we have a fabulous group there. When I look at my IT, sometimes it's simple things. How many of you have Wi-Fi in your house or at your business? 
I did not have Wi-Fi in my courthouses. I'm across the street. I, am I coming up on 15? How much? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that. We've done some hey, fabulous stuff on our boat. Uh, <laughs> I'll close it up, so I'll, I'll, we'll shut it down. You know, I will say, I, I really appreciate you coming out here tonight. It really has been a fabulous group of organization. I'm so proud of this group, so I wanted to brag over and over and over on them. But you know, we also have an important thing. It's nice to see a group of Republicans together. We know we have a mission this fall. We need to do, make a change in this country if we're going to go the right direction. So keep the energy up, keep the excitement up. I accept the nomination. <laughs>